Hey everybody, welcome to my call about how to run a successful challenge group. I am basically going to go over some of the things that I do to make my challenge group successful. So try and save your questions until the end, but if it's pertinent to what I'm saying right at that moment, please feel free to jump in. I'm going to go ahead and answer your question. Uh, right now, there's only two other people on the call besides me. So actually two, three, because you guys are together. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. So we don't have a whole lot of other people on there. So you guys jump in as you see fit, okay? All right. First thing I want to talk about, and this is really important because it helps you get to the challenge group. And it's something I actually learned from my husband and his work in the juvenile justice system. And that is how to build a relationship. And oddly enough, and you will understand some of these steps that I'm discussing, is that there is a whole process, and Mindy and I both touched on it today, about people when they tell you no, it's not necessarily to, sorry, oh, don't mess up my mud joe here. Okay, sorry, somebody tried to message me and it's all driving me nuts. Um, but basically, being consistent, Inviting, getting that no response doesn't necessarily mean that they're saying no to you. And there is an actual psychological process that people go through before they say yes. And I want to go over those things with you guys because I think it'll help you in the inviting process, which is going to follow up with your three vital behaviors training that you received today. So there is something called um, the stages of change, I've got to look down at my notes, I'm sorry. The stages of change and how to apply them to your leads, customers, clients, potential customers, everybody, okay? The first one is what we call pre-contemplation. Pre-contemplation, when you're inviting somebody, is complete and total avoidance. How many times have you messaged somebody and asked them to become part of a challenge group and gotten crickets? A bunch. That is because they are not ready to consider the change in behavior. So that's that pre-contemplation. They're not even thinking about the change yet, all right? Then you have people that are in the contemplation phase, and that's acknowledging that there's a problem, but they are not exactly ready to make the change necessary. Pre-contemplation is just complete and total avoidance. Contemplation is, yeah, I need to know, I know I need to, Jeremy, wait a minute, let me use you. Just like you promised your mom 10 days before she passed away that you would do something about your weight. That was contemplation. You knew right then and there something had to change, but you weren't ready for the change, all right? So you knew you acknowledged it. You said, yes, I have a problem but you were not ready and you weren't ready until 10 months later. All right. So the next stage is what we call preparation or determination. And that's actually taking the steps to start that change. Jeremy, for you, that was when you finally decided to give in to your coach and say, Hey, yes, this is, I'm, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Um, the next step is what we call action or willpower. And that's making the changes and living the new behaviors. That's when you commit to purchasing the program or your customer, client, I like to call them clients, commit to purchasing the program. Right at that moment, they're saying, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. But, and I hate to use the word but, I have to though. But we've had people that have purchased programs and they seem to be in this phase, but they actually aren't. I am running a challenge group right now that I had several people purchase the 21 day fix and they're not doing anything yet. So they haven't gotten really past the preparation determination phase, okay? But when they take action and you finally decide to make that change as you did, Jeremy, it takes every ounce of who you are to make that change. It is time consuming. It is something that you think about every minute of every second of every day. 
And then finally you get through to the maintenance phase where this becomes habit. And those that have accepted this and ingrained it into their brain are the ones that normally make a really good coach prospect. So again, we have pre-contemplation, not even looking, ignoring you, crickets. Then you have contemplation. Yeah, you know, I need to change, but right now is not the time for me. Then you have preparation, determination. You know what, Astrid, I think it's time that I do something. Then you have the action. I'm ready, let's purchase. And then you have maintenance. After they've seen success or they've seen that it is better for them, they actually take this into a daily habit. So that is something important to know. Those steps are important to know because that allows you some insight to where they're at and how to approach them, okay? So that was kind of like pre-challenge group, building relationships, information. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to run a good challenge group. A good challenge group isn't just about them changing physically, all right? I tell people I'm not just a beach body coach. Somehow, at the end of the day, I also become a life coach. I become a life coach to these people because like me, like you, they have internal struggles that they're dealing with that have prevented them from taking the necessary steps to being a healthy person, all right? So this is really important because I believe this is something vital that if you use the challenge group guides that Beachbody provides you, they're great for a basic foundation for your challenge groups, but they don't address those inner deep-seated emotions and problems that you have. So that's why I say the whole life coach thing. And as I have been growing here in the past four weeks and really digging deep, I have started implementing these things into my challenge group. And they're really simple little changes but I am, what I'm doing is incorporating what guides have from Beachbody and re-scripting it and rewriting my own guides. That way I don't have to keep doing it over and over and over again. And I think it's going to be more effective that way. It is something I'm planning on sharing with everybody, just like I shared the other one. So um, let's talk about challenge groups. Let's talk about setting them up. Let's talk about how you do it. The very first thing you need to do is sit down and figure out a start date. It doesn't matter if you just started coaching. This is something I learned from corporate. Set a challenge date, a challenge group date, within the first 30 days of coaching. Doesn't matter if you have one participant. It doesn't matter if you have 10 participants, okay? But you want to set a date. So if I were to start coaching um, today, I would set probably, so I could get a little bit more familiar with being a coach, I would set it from a month from now. And I would, in a week from today, set up a Facebook event. The Facebook event is super easy to set up. If you're on Facebook, you have probably been invited to 10 bajillion things. It's on the left hand of your screen, um, on the menu on the side. And, you know, b below everything, it says events. You click on events and it asks you, hold on, I can't find it. Let me, somebody's wanting to get in on the meeting and can't find the link. Sorry. All right. So on the left side, it says events and it, you click on events and then it asks you if you want to create a new event. You create a new event. You come up with a catchy little title. My title um, for my last 21 day fix group that started this past Monday was hot to mommies Valentine's Day challenge group. I targeted moms that wanted to look good right before Valentine's Day, you know, for their husbands. And I started inviting all the moms that I have on my friends list. I also promoted it on my like page. And once you create the event, you can't ignore the event. So for two weeks straight, what you want to do is go into your event link and you want to 
post things about whatever program that you're trying to build this challenge group on. If it's an all programs challenge group, no big deal. You, you promote or you put motivational quotes, you put, you put your personality into it, okay? As people click join, you want to connect with them. When they click join, I'd say within 24 hours, you need to message them and say, hey, Jeremy, I noticed that you wanted to be part of the New Year, New You, New You Challenge. I'm really excited to have you aboard. And then you wait for their response. Once they respond, then you start a dialogue as is in the inviting process that you learned about in the three vital behaviors for those of you that were there today. For those of you that were not there today, there is a five-step invite process that you can find in your uh, coach online office, and you would just follow that and work with that person to find the right program, unless it's program specific. Okay, so once they click join, you're connecting with them, you're building that relationship, the reason why I ask, uh, I talked to you about the building relationships, the pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance is because you need to find out where it is in that process, the person that clicked join is at, and then you can address them in a better manner. So hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit of insight on what to do with the event in itself. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is after a couple of weeks, because it's going to, they have a two-week window to order, right? Two weeks. That third week is the beginning of your pre-challenge group time. And that pre-challenge group time is very important. I think a lot of coaches ignore that week before, but it is truly important, especially if you have a program like the 21 Day Fix because I have had one too many challengers open their 21 day fix and go, ah, this is too confusing. So you need to make sure, and I, have, I am working on the scripting because Beachbody doesn't have this on their challenge group guides of how to go through the meal planning book. And I will share that with you guys. I have created posts starting from Wednesday to Sunday for preparation for that Monday start. All right, I've even included graphics and everything. So you guys will have a bouncing board to start off with and not have to put time and effort into doing this. Um, but that, pre, that preparation time before you start your challenge group is integral. You want to have, you want to build a community with your challengers. You want them to feel like they are part of a very special little group of people and you want them to get to know each other because at the end of the day, they are going to be supporting each other. It happens every time I run a challenge group. People end up being friends. They end up Facebook friending each other. They end up following each other on their timelines and, and saying great things and building these online relationships, which for unfortunately and fortunately, is the wave of the future. I personally like uh, online interaction better because I'm shy when it comes to in person. Um, if you were at the three vital behaviors training today, you probably didn't see me talking to a whole lot of people individually because that's not, it's, it's very, um, I just get nervous. That's all there is to it. I, I, it's easier, I'm learning for me to talk online where I have this barrier. So um, anyway, I just got sidetracked. Sorry about that. So that week beforehand, super important, all right? Um, day one, it's not just about following the online guide that Beachbody provides. You have to put your personality into it. And I'm bringing back the life coach um, aspect of it. In my challenge groups, I am doing things like, and these are old school things. I mean, we've heard of Thankful Thursday before. Well, Thankful Thursday gives everybody a chance to really kind of reflect on what in their life they're thankful for and why. And I challenge them not to say the typical, I'm thankful for my husband, wife. I'm thankful for my kids. 
You know, I want them to think outside of that. We all know we're all thankful for our immediate family and what they give to us. But what else are you thankful for? For example, I am, although the recovery was difficult, very thankful that I had double knee surgery because for, since I was 18, I have lived with knee pain and I never got it fixed. And I didn't realize until I got it fixed just how much pain I was in daily to go running, to do my workouts and everything that I just, you know, mentally pushed through it. Now that I have double knee, had double knee surgery, I have no pain in my knees whatsoever at all, ever. I am so thankful that I know what life without knee pain is like, you know, so I really try and push the challengers to think outside of the box. So if you're looking for the guides and you should use them, I will tell you, I personally think they push a lot of product, but you can spin it your own way and make it personal. You don't have to use their posts. Their posts, um, should give you an idea of how to incorporate it into the challenge. But if you go to sales and marketing, Beach Body Challenge, you click on Beach Body Challenge uh, tools and then Beach Body Group Guides, it will give you everything that you need. Now, um, make the group fun. We talked about, oh, I, I didn't finish talking about the life coaching. Okay, so Thankful Thursday was an idea. Another really good idea is to put a picture, you know, I challenge them to put a picture of when they have felt the most beautiful. And I put in there, that doesn't mean the skinniest you've ever been or the physical prettiest you've ever been. Like I felt beautiful the day my triplets were born. I looked like complete and utter shit, death warmed over, but the truth of the matter is I knew something huge just happened and what my body was able to do. And I felt beautiful from the inside. I finally, there was a peace that came over me and that's what beauty really is about. And doing these kind of posts builds confidence in your challengers. So you remember those kind of things and you interject that into your challenge group. Um, another way to do that is to have them share their, their favorite outfit or um, share a favorite memory or something I just started doing as a fun fact about themselves. Um, another question you can ask your challengers is, What's your biggest daily struggle? Some people have a really hard time just waking up in the morning. And by them having the permission to share that information with you, it seems to help the healing process. And it's just like Mindy said, from what Danny, what Danny Johnson has said is, how dare you take that experience away from them? How dare you not show up? for those people? How dare you not stay on them and keep inviting because you never know that one life that you're going to change. Well, challenge groups aren't just physical activity. Challenge groups are really learning about how to build a more in-depth relationship and, and help people get through their struggles. I think it is safe to assume that every person that has been big in their life is it is attached to an emotional issue. All right. I know I was fat because of several emotional struggles I had because I emotionally ate because I didn't care about myself enough to do anything about it. So when you take the time to give that to the people that you're helping, give them that opportunity to share with you, and maybe start working through, through those emotional struggles and hurdles that they have had, you're going to get better results. You are not a cookie cutter coach. And I don't want you to ever be a cookie cutter coach. I want you to make everything that you do all with all your heart and soul. Okay. So 
it's going to take a few times and some practice to find your groove, but when you do, it is absolutely 100% fantastic. Um, another thing that I do, we're going to talk images, uh, graphics for your challenge group. Every Beach Body uh, program has its own Facebook page, 21 Day Fix, 21 Day Fix Extreme, P90, P90X, P90X3, Focus T25, Insanity, Insanity Max 30, Shaleen Extreme, Turbo Fire, Pio, they all have their own Facebook pages. If you go to the official Facebook page, they have a crap ton of graphics. All you gotta do is right click on them, save to your computer. And if you're running a challenge specific group, use those. There's fantastic motivational quotes. Something that I'm doing in my 21 day fix group. And this is again, outside of the realm of what Beachbody offers in their guide, their, their challenge group guides. I love that Autumn has a YouTube channel and she goes in depth. She has this fantastic containers webinar that you can send to potential people or that you can post in that um, pre or the, the, the week before your actual start date that explains how the containers go from, from the woman herself, okay? She also has these three, there's three, great um, free spice modifications to your containers that I like to share with my challengers. That way they can spice up their food. There's also bonus workouts. There are all kinds of things. So utilize the YouTube channels of all the trainers and get that and use it in your challenge groups. Use it in your events when you're trying to get people to commit to the program as well. Um, so the graphics from the Facebook pages, the YouTube channels are fantastic. Again. So one other way that you can motivate your challengers, and there's a lot of different ways you can do a point system. I'm not doing it in my challenge group currently, but the one in January we're doing it, I actually paired up with another coach, is to use a point system. And they're responsible for posting their points every evening, and then we tally their total points at the end of the challenge, and that person that has the most points is going to receive a prize. Our January challenge group was Insanity Max 30. The prize is going to be those extra DVDs that would come in the deluxe version that don't come in just the regular one. To give you an idea of what the prize is, you can make the prize anything. You can also do a weekly prize and send somebody free samples of Shakeology, free samples of EME, which I had 30 minutes before the phone call today. Um, Free, uh, free Shakeology bag, anything that you can think of, a free clean eating magazine even, to get your challengers motivated and moving. My 21 day fix group is really slow, so next week I'm gonna do a little competition for them, so that maybe it helps pick up the, the uh, momentum in there. So, um, I think that's a lot. Do you guys have any questions? I do. Yeah. Do you, uh, when you start up a new challenge group, like you say for 21 day fix, do you put a cap on the amount of new challengers you're gonna put in that, like four to six or do you kind of just let it run if you have 12 people that buy a challenge pack? Do you put all 12 of those in the same yes. challenge group to get together and run with that? I do. That's what I do. And the reason why is because out of those 12 challengers, you might have half that participate. Yes. I'm sorry, I missed the answer because I was getting a call. No, go ahead. What? Uh, oh, you were getting a call just now. Okay. Um, the question was, uh, it, do you put a cap on how many challengers are in a group? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, if I start a challenge group like this last 21 day fixed challenge group, I have several 
old challengers that also wanted to jump in because it's been months and they gave up and they didn't make it through the last one. So they wanted to get into this one. Um, so I don't cap them. Now, obviously, if it's like 50 people, I would. Uh, that's way too much for a challenge group to really be effective and for your time to be effective because you cannot keep up with that many people in one group. You can keep up with five challenge groups, maybe with 10 people in it each or two challenge groups with 20 people in it each. But to have one challenge group with 50 people and the wall moving that fast with posts might drive you crazy. Okay, so uh, unless you're... I've never, well, my group right now has 30. Out of the 30, I have maybe 10 really participating, if that gives you an idea. Any other questions? Hi, Jade, by the way. Yeah, I have a question. Um, Mindy said she runs one challenge group a month. Well, she runs one group a month, which includes her three people. Hold, hold on one second, sorry. I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> so she runs her, yeah, so she runs one group a month with, you know, free challengers. Okay. Her paid challengers, and I think she does her, like, seven-day group in there also. Do you do that also, or do you have a separate group for each? Okay, this is what I do. I have a free fitness group, completely and totally free. Uh, okay, I have a 10-minute a um, warning because I don't have the professional uh, version of this. Sorry. Um, I have a free fitness group. It's completely and totally free. I let anybody that requests to be in it to be in it. I run all my free challenges. Like tomorrow we start our free 30-day arm challenge, arms, guns. All right, so what I do is I promote it on my Facebook page, my personal page, because it's free. I'm not asking anybody to buy anything. I'm not asking them to sign up for a Team Beachbody account. I'm not asking them to do anything except click join to the group. So I do all my challenge, uh, my free fitness challenges in my fitness group. The fitness group is also where and I use this word dump, and it's not really a good word, but um, when one challenge ends, I ask all the members of that challenge group to go ahead and go into my free fitness group. It's a twofold thing right there. One, because I want them to continue, and I go in there and I treat my free fitness group as a daily challenge group. I go in there and motivate them like I do my paid challenge groups, okay? But also because they're posting their Beachbody program. So all the people in there that have never purchased anything from me or have no clue what program they are, they're getting a snippet of all the different programs from all my previous challengers. And I don't have to do a lot of the work. I sold three challenge packs that, that way this month. They saw, like, what's the 21 day? What, what is she doing? The 21 day? What, what's the 20? Why is she doing this container thing? How come her results were so good? And I was like, well, it's a program called the 21 day fix. And this is what it is. So it generates interest with your free people when your old challengers go in there. So you are more than welcome. I'll post mine if you want to kind of take a peek at how I do it. But then, yes, I also run a regular challenge group, sometimes two a month, depends. This month, coming up in February, I'm gonna be running two. One 21 Day Fix Extreme, the other one's gonna be another 21 Day Fix program. And I don't know <laughs> why, because my best results were with uh, Focus T25. I think a lot of it has to do with the price of the program as to why I don't get more people doing that one. But the 21 Day Fix is the perfect starter program. I don't care who you are. It's the perfect starter program. And it's the perfect starter program because it allows you to not only exercise, but it teaches people how to eat right. And eating right is 80% of the problem. We all know it's 80% what you eat, 20% what you do you know, as far as workouts. So 
Yes. Free challenge group. Sorry, I'm going to review that. Free challenge group is constantly running. Um, it's not free challenge group. Free fitness group, where I host my free challenges. Always constantly running. I treat it like a normal challenge group. Then I have one to two paid that get a program and want a different, you know, want that specific challenge group. So hopefully that answered your question. Any other? Astrid. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, now the uh, clean eating challenge that I'm hoping Hosting tomorrow, starting tomorrow. Yes. Do I? Should I? Um, I only have like about five or six people. Okay. Um, should I have like some kind of reward at the end of the week, or just? I'm basically just trying to get people to learn how to eat clean, and I mean, do you think I should have some kind of reward at the end to whoever, whoever does the best job, or? You can. Um, if if you haven't put thought enough more thought into it before you start they all start tomorrow it might catch them off guard like whoa or um, you can say you know if you have five people um, I'm trying to think you just started coaching Jay I didn't give a whole lot of anything for free or bonus or anything but maybe you can say I can I don't know we'll have to talk about that but yes, okay. I, if I was doing it, I would have um, a free workout for them. Um, I've bought copies of Hip Hop Abs and um, Combat, and I have extra psychology packets and things like that, that I would put something together for them. You, you don't have the time to do that, but we can brainstorm and figure out something else that you can give out. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> I just finished the, um, the my two rounds of uh, cardio fix and the Dirty 30 on 21 Day Fix. Well, I, I, I just want you to know you can tell the difference in your face. <laughs> well, I definitely am smiling more, so. Jeez, oh, I don't know. Maybe it has to do with that those uh, feel-good horm uh, feel good things in your brain being released, you know? Well, yeah, and that and seeing the results when you look in the mirror, you know? Yes. It, 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 and you know what? It's not the mirror that necessary. Let me tell you about the challenge group, guys. Make your people take their before pictures, even if they keep it to themselves, because they will regret not doing it. I'm, uh, and I'm only saying this because Jade personally sent me. She didn't post them. She personally sent me the difference after doing the booty challenge and it's motivating like you see your body physically change you don't see it every day but at the end of a month of doing these you know exercises that target your rear end and seeing the difference you're like okay there was a big huge difference so make sure that you make them take their before and after pictures do we have any other questions? I've got about three minutes left. I think that's about it, Astrid. I'll, um, I have to get going though, because the uh, baby's crying and my yes. husband's been watching her for an hour now, so. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, I'll, I'll later. Take recording. Bye, hon. Bye. I have another question. Yes, ma'am. Do you do like only one daily post a day, or do you post like two and, um, I'm not talking about responding to others, but like, you know, you posting as encouraging and inspiring. Do you do more than one post? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Like, um, my morning post is normally a motivational quote with, for the 21 day fix, whatever the workout is for that day. Then mid morning, I might post a video from autumn with <laughs> the, um, spice modifications that are free you know, in the diet. And in the afternoon, I might post um, an informational post about water and say, water bomb, everybody, when you see this post, stop and drink eight ounces of water. Sometimes I'm like, okay. Yeah, other times, other days, I'm like, show me your shoes, you know, show me your workout shoes. Here's my workout shoes. Give me a workout shoe selfie, you know, things like that. Like, have fun. 
think about okay. if, you, if you were in a room with them, would you just say, you know, every day getting stronger and then just leave it at that? Uh, you might be like, oh, I like your workout capris. Where did you get them? So think about the conversations that you would have. I ask people, show me your favorite workout clothes. Show me your favorite outfit. Show me your favorite shoes to work out in. Um, you know, and when I ask them about their workout shoes, nine times out of 10, they're using the wrong ones. So that gives me an opportunity okay. to teach them about the right workout shoes. And I learned the hard way. You don't wear running shoes to do Sean T. Or to, uh, yes. you know, you wear cross training shoes but, or court shoes, but people don't know this. And so they go get these, oh, look, I just bought myself some new, brand new running shoes. And I'm like, yeah, those are the wrong ones. You know, so it, gives, it opens up the opportunity for dialogue. Okay, we have okay. in a minute, and it's going to cut us all off. So if you have any other questions, just message me, and I will be more than happy to answer them for you. And I thank you very much for coming. It was great. I hope you all learned something. And be safe driving and getting back home. Thank you. Thank you, Astrid. Thank, Thank you. you. Talk to you soon. Talk to you guys soon.